Hello and welcome. This is the first part of the moth sampler video tutorial. We're going to start today on moth number one. They are labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to start with this one up here. Unfortunately, my printed fabric didn't arrive in time. So good news is I am going to be doing mine um, in little individual hoops just for kicks. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that to see how they turn out. So let's go ahead and get started. Awesome, let's get to it. So I'm gonna start with the body on this little moth here. So I'm using a full strand of this kind of yellowy color. And we're gonna do our turkey work first right here for the head. If you've never done turkey work before, you might want to check out a video of turkey work worked like in a straight line because we're feeling a shape with it which is a little bit more complicated all right so i want this turkey work to be coming out towards us right i don't want it to be kind of laying flat like maybe if you're doing a flower and you or one of like turkey work petals you'd you lay the turkey work so it kind of went down like this we don't want that we want it poofy we want it right up in our faces, right? So I'm going to keep that in mind as I do this. I do need to kind of um, secure this stitch I started. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, because I do need to actually bend it a little bit in a direction, I'm going to bend it towards the center. And to do that, I'm placing a little stitch up here. Just a baby stitch. And now I am going to pierce this stitch. Like so. To make my next stitch. Which I'm going to go down here. And this will be a loop. So again, I'm going to treat this like I treated this first little fringe. I need to secure it in. I'm going to do that by making a tiny stitch here, again, directing it towards the center if I have to direct it in any direction. And then continue, I'm going to pierce, go down. In my head, I'm kind of doing the perimeter of the moth head, <laughs> kind of going in a circle. I don't know, sometimes I like to start in the center and then go out. Other times I like to do an outline and then go in. I haven't decided if one is better than the other. My loops are excessively long. <laughs> These really don't need to be this long. I always get very paranoid though and so I tend to make mine too long and then I have to cut a lot. So we're just kind of repeating the, the same two actions, right? We, we pierce that anchored stitch, come down and then anchor that. So here at this point, it's like, what? What are we doing? I see a big mess. Do you want to anchor this? Oops, nope, I didn't anchor it. I undid it. Try that again. There's definitely more uh, feel than see going on here. And then I think I'm trying to pry and see where the center even is because I thought we would maybe have a hole in the middle, but I don't actually even see one. So what I am going to do though to finish is I'm actually going to come back up. I'm just kind of coming up in the middle. And cut this. And this is kind of a big old mess, so we're going to go ahead and trim it. right away 
And then it's up to you how long you want these to be, how much finessing you want to do. And as you keep working, like the, the strands will get more frayed and there might be more opportunity to kind of finesse it a little bit more. Let's see what I, what I did here. You can see he got very, very puffy and very, very short. I'll look from the side. Very short, right? So I will finesse this some more. I think for now, we're always okay. I just want to make sure it didn't get in our way. Um, so we're going to continue with that thread and do bottom half of the body. We're just going to be doing satin stitch down here. So you may notice in the directions, it'll tell you the body, then the top wings and the bottom wings. You do not have to do it in that order. In the video, I'll actually be jumping around a bit. Um, basically, I follow that order until it doesn't make sense to do that. That'll make more sense here in a minute. <laughs> also, you may want to take a look at your kit, if you do have the kit and the floss that's included. So, sometimes we're using a full strand, sometimes we're using three strands, sometimes we're using two strands, sometimes we're using one strand. So, it can be good to kind of look ahead and see, like, okay, where else am I using this color? How much thread do I have? There should be enough. Oh my god, the cats are just knocking stuff off counters in the other room unfortunately they are all awake they have three cats and for some of them some reason all three of them are wide awake right now and they just really 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 want to know what I'm doing and if they could potentially help <laughs> and let's see I was going to tie this off but we're actually going to need it a little bit later so I'm going to just park this over here and it'll definitely get tangled up in later work and then I'll regret that but you know I tried okay next we're gonna take the direction say to do this antenna next but we're um we're using the thread we use here we're gonna use it later so I'm just gonna wait to do that when I have the thread for something else um so I actually I'm gonna do the this little section right here what do we want to do left or right I don't know I mean it, it shouldn't matter okay We'll go over here. So I'm right-handed. It feels appropriate. Okay. So, oh, here's another regret I have. So this is the very light yellow. And it looks very similar to the Acru, the, the off-white color. Um, we did not need both. I apologize. If you want to scale down the project and only use one of those colors, please do. I didn't realize how bad it was until I was like writing the uh, pattern up and I couldn't tell. I couldn't even tell. I was like, I don't know what, which one I used. <laughs> I used both, but I can't even tell. They're so similar. Okay, so I basically just did a, uh, a chain stitch, but I didn't finish it. We're doing buttonhole stitch here. And I started it with a little chain, I guess. So we're going to go down with our needle. And make sure you get really in here. That probably wasn't close enough. You know, we can kind of peek under here and make sure you're really close to the body. And I'm making this loop and I'm going to come up and catch the loop on this guideline. Okay, let me do it again. So I'll go down with my needle near the body. loop. I'm going to catch it along the guideline. Sorry, you keep seeing little bits of the, the anchor tail of this thread popping up. And it's up to you how close you want these to be. Like naturally there's going to be a tiny bit 
of the fabric showing through here, which I think looks good. Like if you want to even have more, you can make these furtherly spaced furtherly. I don't think that's a word, but you know what I'm saying. Let's do one more. So here's actually an opportunity. Oh, it's raining. Oh. What a perfect day to film. I have horrible natural light today. So we're having to use a lamp. So much for that sunny Arizona. Actually, we need this rain, so I shouldn't be complaining. It's just, it's so different than what we're used to. Look outside, it looks like it should be like 30 degrees. Okay, so because I already have this thread ready to go, like it would make sense to do this side. I'm not going to demo both sides. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and move to this piece here. This is just satin stitch, or is it padded? I believe it's padded satin stitch. So you can pad anything underneath. It looks like I'm not padding it. It looks like I'm just going to pad it with itself. So basically I'm going to do two layers of satin stitch essentially to make it look a bit thicker. If you want to do other stitches underneath, like we could... I feel guilty I didn't put anything underneath. Okay, so I'm going to sneak some stitches underneath and pretend like I did them earlier. So you could just do like a couple straight stitches underneath. Once I get my time machine. <laughs> so this is just to add a little bit of thickness here. I would recommend doing it before starting the top layer like I did. <laughs> okay. So I'll continue then filling in the circle on top of those stitches. So all of these stitches that are included, I have more videos if you need to practice more. I definitely would not call this a beginner pattern. If you love it and you really want to do it and you're new to embroidery, definitely just do one moth at a time. Treat each moth like its own pattern. Check out the individual videos for all the stitches. Practice those. I have a little gap here I'm trying to fill in. Okay, I think that's mostly a circle. So I'm gonna try to anchor this. Okay, so we're going to just continue, and this next shape we're filling again with buttonhole. Sorry, it takes me a second to remember. Is this buttonhole? Is this blanket? So I'm starting the same way with this little, like I'm going to do a giant detached chain stitch here. And again, be mindful where you're going down so that you're touching the previous section so we don't have any gaps. And then the, for the guidelines here, see we have this kind of double line here. Go down on this first line, okay? That first guideline. Oops. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it's like concentrating. <laughs> I was concentrating so hard on the guideline that I forgot what stitches we were doing. We're not doing that. That would just be if we only wanted to do two buttonholes. Okay. Rethreading. 
a professional, I swear. Okay. So when we do this stitch, but not to fill a shape, which we will be doing in Moth 3, I believe. Uh, it's called Blanket Stitch. And this one is called Buttonhole Stitch because if you look at your buttonholes, you'll see that tiny stitch and all those little stitches are touching. So that's how I remember is I actually have to like think of a buttonhole in my head to remember what this is called. Hey, biscuit. All the kitties are here. Well, this is quite lovely. I have the rain. I've got a bunch of cats. I've got embroidery. This is a nice day. I kind of pierced that stitch, did you notice? I snagged a little bit of it. So I believe it is very helpful. And if you notice that that first stitch I did, I didn't go all the way to this corner because this is rounded. So I basically did the first stitch to this kind of point here. And then the second stitch actually goes to that corner. I would recommend that. If you don't do that, I'll show you on my sample hoop I didn't do that. And I just added an extra stitch to help because it was a little bit unstable. Do we need one more? Sure. I'm doing so many more stitches on this one. So interesting. Uh, compared to my sample hoop. I have fuzz. I'll trim it later. Okay. So the sample hoop. You can see. I'm trying to have a stick for pointing. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen stitches. So kind of up to you, like how how full do you want it to look? Um, I like both. I actually might like this better, to be honest. But I like both. Um, okay, so here's what I want to show you. So up here. I went straight to that corner and this edge was loose. And so I just added a like extra anchor stitch. It's just like a tiny little stitch I came on here. You can see I did it on this side too. You can probably see on this side better. It's just this little like stitch because the actual anchor is like over here. And this was like floppy and kind of like falling in uh, away from the guideline. And so I just kind of like added that stitch. Uh, which is, you can do, you, that's allowed. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> There's no rules. All right. So let's move on to this green. We're going to do chain stitch. <clears throat> now this, this guideline here is supposed to be like the center guideline for that chain stitch. We'll see if that's, it looks a little tight, but we'll see if we can make that happen. I mean, if it doesn't happen, it's, it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna start at the bottom. But you can see there's like a little gap here. Like I'm not like right up against this. Uh, right up against the edge of the um, buttonhole. Because as we do our chain stitch, like it adds thickness, right? So I'm gonna go back in the same hole I just came up. And if you can do five, I think the, I can't remember if the printed fabric will have that, the notches or not, but 
I'm going to come in here. So this counts as one of them. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Not exactly evenly spaced, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to come up here. Catch my loop. Go back down that hole I just came up. Catch that loop. Now if you're like, whoa, lady, that's really thick. How are you fitting all this stuff in this tiny area? Um, yes. <laughs> you can drop down at any time. Like you can do, you can use a single strand. You know, you can use a single strand for this stuff if you want. You can drop down to three on here and then you would still have the difference in texture without using this bulkiness that I am. So don't, don't be afraid to make changes. And like, I know some people hate this particular stitch, the buttonhole. Well then fill with detached chain stitches. Like use the detached chain stitches lining up here instead. And then if there's like little gaps between them, just use straight stitches. You know, there's a lot of ways you can still make the pattern work if there's like parts that you don't like or you can't do or you don't want to do, you never want to do, you hate it, you know. <laughs> like, okay, let's work with that. Like, what can we do? What can we modify? Hi, princess. Princess is here and she's rubbing on everything, including the stand for the camera. Thanks, dear. Thank you, dear. No, we can't do laps right now, though. All right, so we're going to do our straight stitches. So I'm going from the edge of the wing and I'm gonna come into like here. Basically, I'm trying to go down that same hole. I mean, I don't know if that's actually gonna happen, but that's what I'm aiming for. So if you look at this, you'll notice it's looking like half of a wheat ear. When you do wheat ear stitch, um, this isn't the order in which you do it, but uh, this is the order in which I did it. <laughs> I found it easier to do it this way. Go up and then go down. And if you if you're if you have just not a lot of room, you can go beyond your stitches or your excuse me, go beyond your guidelines here. You're covering your guidelines, like who cares if you made your wing a little bit bigger, right? So the fifth stitch is gonna be on the bottom edge of our wing. Right here. Awesome. Okay, and we are going to use this again. I'm looking at my thread, trying to see if I have enough thread. We'll be fine. Okay. We'll use that down there later. All right, so let's go ahead. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead with the brown. All right, so while we're here with the brown, we can go ahead and do our antenna, right? That's supposed to be wet backstitch. So what can you fit? Three, maybe two? I don't know. Not very many. One. Yeah, that should have just been two. Those are so tiny and I have a really big needle. <laughs> But again, uh, I can just go beyond my guideline there and make the antenna a little bit longer to fit in three stitches. All right, now I'm gonna use this color and I'm gonna fill in these little gaps. Actually, let's do a French knot first. French knot's optional. If you wanna do a French knot up here, you can. I think it's in the guidelines. So what I do is I like come up on one side and go down the other side of one of these. So there's like, I don't know, we'll just go up here and see what happens. <laughs> so I'm coming up in between. 
I'm just gonna sorry I was doing colonial knots the other day and all of a sudden I can't remember how to do a French knot okay I'm doing a wrap <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll gonna go on the other side of that stitch to go down and pull I like wasn't breathing for a second there or you can actually even pierce the stitch because that does push some of the stitches around oops oops what have I done so I need a little bit of a you know gotta be nice to it and make it be where you want it to be okay then I'm gonna do straight stitches in here which and some of the sections are a little thicker, so it's going to be more like a satin stitch, right? You might need to put like a little stitch right here. If you have a little gap and you don't like it, you can put a little stitch here. And then I'm going to come here and just start kind of filling this in. So I did not use like stabilizer for this little project. It is in a tiny little three inch hoop. So there's not, not a lot to get messed up as far as the, <clears throat> the design. If you're using a six inch hoop and a full design, or maybe you blew it up and you did an eight inch hoop, it might be worth using some kind of stabilizer. You'll want to do that. Um, before you start stitching, but regardless, I think just most importantly would be making sure your fabric is really tight in your hoop. Check on it. If it gets loose, tighten it back up. Make sure the design is transferred with the fabric how you want it, like how it's going to be framed or whatever. So if that means in a hoop. And yeah, it's, it's hard to, the hard part is just like keeping the wings even, keeping the moths even compared to each other. It can be a little tricky. So, but do remember that, you know, there's, there's variety in nature. And if you have a moth that has one wing bigger than the other or a wonkier shape than the other and hey man it's just that's just what that moth looks like it's okay okay we finished the top wing of one moth yay okay let's keep going so we're gonna fill this bottom section oh look see i didn't even know look i didn't go all the way look at that little gap because my turkey work was covering it naughty naughty okay so you can fix if you have something like that. Let's see. I would probably just fix it. I'll probably just add like a, a couple stitches of this color. Kind of blend it in there. So we won't worry about it for right now. But we're going to fill down here with some back stitch. So I'm going to start. You should see in your directions there's like a, a diagram with lines. <laughs> Most diagrams have lines. But this diagram in particular shows you uh, suggested stitch direction. So when you're filling with back stitch or satin stitch or long and short stitch, it'll tell you which stitch direction I used in case you want to use the same one. So I basically followed along this edge and then let this stitch direction kind of echo through the rest of the shape. So let's see what I'm doing. And again, this is three strands. If it's like too clunky, you want to drop down a fewer, go for it. Okay. 
So on social media the other day, I asked people what they call this stitch. And there was lots of answers. And the one that I think I liked the best that makes the most sense to me is this is filling with backstitch in a brick pattern. Because you can fill with backstitch and have all the stitches line up and it won't look like the brick, right? So the brick makes it um, have them like offset by half a stitch, right? Like a brick would look laid bricks. But I like that, that that's the pattern I'm using is a brick pattern. But the stitch is not a brick stitch, it's a back stitch. And it's taking forever, my goodness. <laughs> I'm tired of it already. I thought I was supposed to be a patient embroidery artist, but I guess I'm not today. So when you get to the circle, you might have to do some whatever stitches just to kind of fill in the space here. Not worry too much about it. That's my suggestion in general. Don't worry too much about it. Hmm. So here, I mean, maybe you could fit st two stitches in there, but it's really tight. So I just did one. I do need a stitch here. <laughs> it's not quite back stitch over here, is it? I'm basically just making stitches to mimic what it would look like if I didn't have this big circle in the way. <laughs> And that's pretty much what the rest of filling this in is going to look like. I feel like I made this in a weird place. Okay. We're going to go past here. Yeah, my back stitch is like totally devolved here. Into front stitches, touching straight stitches next to other stitches. Okay, so I'm coming back here because I'm. When I made that stitch, I made it a little far away. I think it's interesting how my stitches look when I stitch on camera versus when I first do the design. Because the, the original design, it's like I'm just doing what I feel like <laughs> and there's like some freedom in it there's it it always looks more relaxed to me which makes sense because now I'm like oh shoot okay I have to follow the instructions I mean I wrote them but like I don't I wouldn't necessarily do things the same way every time you know um and I don't want to you know <laughs> demonstrate a whole new pattern after writing what I did the first time. So I'm a lot more, I don't want to say restricted or restrained, but in a sense, alrighty, how do we do? I feel okay with a little hole right here. Okay. That's going to be that. And I'm going to need this again. But first, let's see. Okay, okay. We have all these parked needles that are coming into play now. Okay, so we're going to do 
So we just have chain stitch and then we're done. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. Let's, let's see, we're at <laughs> over 30 minutes already. Oh. All right. That's fine. It takes what it takes, right? So I feel like this is not where I want it to be. I'm going to pull this out. Okay, hold on. Okay. I'm back to this body color and I'm just going to do a row here of chain stitch. So you'll notice as far as those guidelines go, so I stitched the back stitch up to that first guideline. And as far as what this guideline is for, I don't exactly know what it's going to match up for you. I don't, again, I will not worry too much about it. We're just, we're fitting in <laughs> three rows of chain stitch and a bunch of knots. Okay, I had to kind of untangle some stuff. I don't usually use a clamp when I stitch, and so I'm, I'm, I struggle a little bit with it because I can't really see what's going on in the back. Okay, we're doing our chain stitch here. If you could fit in five, that would be amazing. If you can only fit in four, that's also amazing. If you need to drop down and do fewer strands, do that too. So you can see like I'm just kind of coming up near the that border so that when I actually come down with my chain stitch there's overlap so this looks like it's tucked under here what's back here there's something back here in my way what are you okay so now we'll do the green. My green is a mess. Okay. So same thing here. Oh, playing a little thread chicken here though. <laughs> it fills so quickly, right? So thick. We just have like a tiny little bit here. So whatever you have left, you can just cover it with another row. And this is thinner, right? This is just three ply still. That's what we were using before. And just make it as long as it needs to be to cover. And again, like I'm I'm outside of my guidelines at this point on one edge and that's okay. Um, let's see, like that's, that's enough to cover, but I feel like I need one more just to make it look more smooth with the rest of the design. Just do a baby one. 
go down. That's it.